Nearly four years ago, I did what Nintendo never could. I gave the Game Boy Advance SP a headphone jack. The mod wasn't perfect, it required the removal of a screw post so that the jack could fit. But regardless, I believed at the time that this was the peak. This allowed me to not only play audio through extremely high quality headphones, but the Game Boy Advance SP actually outputs in stereo. But it only has one speaker, so this made everything just sound far more immersive. The insertion and removal of the headphones cut out and reactivated the speaker accordingly. I thought this was it. But then, on one cold autumnal evening, I found myself sat on a sofa, questioning everything. How could I have missed it? The original Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Light, the Game Boy Color, they all had volume wheels. That was it. That's what I was missing all along. I looked at my Game Boy Advance SP and, sure enough, there it was. A volume slider. Everything made sense. I even checked the Mega Duck, the Game Tronic, the Game 8, the Mega Game, and sure enough, wheel, 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 wheel. Even these fake Game Boys, wheel, wheel, wheel. This isn't a DS. This is the Game Boy Advance SP. Wait a minute, what's this? No way, is that a GBA SP vol? A, a, a volume wheel? For the, for the GBA SP? Right, let's get on with taking this Game Boy apart. I'm actually quite excited to see the inside since it's been a good few years. Okay, let's have a look. Oh boy, this is a bit of a nest of wires. I've got to be really careful not to snap these wires, but there's the original volume slider and it just makes my blood boil. Right, let's remove this motherboard further. There's three Phillips screws that we need to undo. Now that we can lift out the motherboard, I'll be able to carefully detach the ribbon cable and take it out entirely. And once that's done, we have the motherboard somewhat free. Well, no doubt this is where things are going to go horribly wrong. There's really not a lot of space to work with and I'm really nervous about damaging any of the surrounding components. There's what looks to be a rather important chip here, some sort of a capacitor there as well and we've got the shoulder button. Three things that I probably need. Also, if we rip off one of the pads, this whole thing is kaput. And I recently did that on a Nintendo DS restoration that I did, so I am very nervous. But let's give it a go. I've got my soldering iron here, my little uh, tip cleaner and stuff like that, some solder, got some desoldering wick, and I've got some flux and a toothbrush. Dental hygiene is important. Can we remove this little cap? Wiggle, wiggle, yes we can. That is a great help. Okay, here we go, let's add a little bit of flux. Right, and then, whilst holding my breath, attempting not to burn my fleece. Did I just burn it? I smell burning. I'm gonna wear this mask because flux makes lots of smoke. Let's go. Ow, that kinda hurt. And so, it began. Initially, I tried to add a bunch of solder and use the soldering wick to sort of suck it all up, but that didn't work. So I took some needle nose tweezers, heated up each pad and lifted up the legs individually. And I was having some success with this until this happened. No! No, this is so difficult. I've lifted up a pad. Oh. Absolutely devastating, but I decided to push on. These back legs were a little bit easier. Once I was able to get one of them up, I could sort of lift the whole thing up and remove it all in one piece. 
but what was the damage? Oh my god. That is a disaster. That whole pad now, number four, is completely gone. And number five has been lifted up from the board as well. So, I think this whole thing's a fail. I'm just talking to myself at this point. I was absolutely gutted. Not only had I ruined a really special Game Boy, but also the video was just a complete failure. How am I gonna solder this wheel into place if there's a pad completely missing? And how is it gonna stay down if one of them is just dangling by a thread? With nothing to lose, I just carried on. I sat the wheel down into place and started bridging the contacts. I've got absolutely no idea if that's going to work. <laughs> yes! And so after shaving off a little bit of plastic to make way for the new volume wheel, I put the whole Game Boy back together and here it is. I can't believe that I managed to salvage this. Look at that. It's a volume wheel on a Game Boy Advance SP. So not only do I now have stereo sound coming out of a Game Boy Advance SP, but I also have a volume wheel, which works perfectly. To me, that's perfection. You want an SP with a phone jack, did that. Now I got the stereo track, but the slider's whack, so I put that volume wheel back. <laughs>